Doctor Nasir. How is everyone? Fine. I'm trying to be fine. Anyway. Okay. So, in this lecture of ours, in this video of ours, we are going to get a very important topic. Very, very important in the sense, it might not be of interest, that much interest for general public. Obviously, topic is a bit cumbersome, a bit heavy. But for the students of CSS, for the students of IELTS, for the students of GRE, for the students of GMAT, and for those people who are holding very top spots, top notches, CFO, CEO, this topic is very important. Right. And you can see over here the name of the topic is writing mechanics, mechanics of writing. Mechanics of writing means those rules, those principles that you have to take care of right, while writing. There are hundreds of rules, but we cannot obviously case all of them. But these five, ten rules, these are the pivot of all that. That's why I will just try to explain this stuff. Perhaps in parts, let's see what happens. And inshallah, if you do stick to this stuff, if you do understand these rules, so I'm pretty sure that you can, your writing automatically ameliorates it into what? Okay. So first let me flip through of these basic rules, then we'll inshallah take them one by one. The first is the rule of verbosity. The rule of verbosity. The second is the rule of Brevity. The rule of brevity. The third is the rule of proximity. The rule of proximity. This one, the fourth is magniloquency. Magniloquency. This is run on sentence. Run on sentence. And this is sentence fragment. Sentence fragment. The next one is use of slang. Use of slang. And the next is subject, verb, concord. Subject, verb, concord. The next is conventional seas. Conventional seas. Then modern seas. Right? Modern seas. And then the rule of prolixity. The rule of prolixity. There are so many other rules, obviously. Right? So, but you should try to be clear at least about this stuff. Okay. So I think if you do understand, grasp this much, so you would be in a position to write something independently. What I have observed, whenever you have to write something, some report, some letter, some proposal, we just go on waiting for the person. Or we run after some boilerplate stuff, right? The stuff that is already there. And no one, and then we say, yeah, this is the way, that's the way, but no one is clear. So everyone shirks that thing, avoids that thing, and we go on passing the book. Yeah, you do it, I haven't got time or things like that. So, Bismillah, let's start with the first. That is verbosity. Okay, rule number one is verbosity. So, the rule of verbosity is number one. Have you... Heard this word, what's meant by verbosity? Actually, the pivot of all this discussion is there are so many things, right? Something you have to run after and something you have to avoid. I'll explain in the coming discussion. Verbosity, this word is from the word verbos. And the literal meaning of the word verbose is something that is very heavy, cumbersome, heavy. Okay. If a boss means heavy, verbosity means heaviness, heaviness, cumbersomeness, heaviness. So, it is one of those rules that you have to avoid. It means this sort of, this sort of mystery. You have to, in your writing, you have to avoid this thing. You have to avoid this thing. That means, for both means having, for both means having. Technically, it means what? 
the use of very heavy and difficult words in your expression, right? So, how do you take it? Or most of means the use of, right? How we and difficult words. Okay. So it might be considered something good, but in routine life, especially in communication and business communication, this thing is considered bad in the sense that people, if you don't understand your message, there's no use, it's futile. Okay. So another thing is that if you actually, if you do this thing, and if you stick to another rule that I have not mentioned over here, suppose you do stick to this time, you use very heavy words, like difficult words, but if you are, if you stick to this rule, that's called the rule of consistency. Consistency. Are you getting? If you follow this rule, then there is no harm in that. Consistency basically means you are consistent in your expression. It means you start with heavy words and you maintain. Right? There was a writer, Shwe bin Muhammad. He was such a scholar that his style was full of right, this thing, verbosity. But he was so consistent. Right? He did maintain all that. It was not the case that at one time he was using very light language, at another he was using very happy. He maintained that. If you can stick to this thing, the word bossy can become a sort of plus. But obviously in routine communication, your main target is to communicate, to convey your message. So obviously, if the right audience is not being able to understand what you are saying, so in that case obviously it becomes useless. Suppose, so consistency means to maintain something. I will explain this to later on. But if you overhear, it means if you can maintain this thing, or mostly might become a plus. Okay. Suppose I use the word falcitude. Have you heard this word? If I say governor nations, nations. Oh, if I say perpendicular. Suppose there is no harm in using these words. If you use any of these, then your style would automatically become a bit verbose. Okay. Suppose falcitude is a bit heavy word, verbose obviously, in the sense that instead of using perhaps 99% people, they might not have even a slight idea of the word. Falcitude is what? The name of some dish, some person, some scholar, what? So, Bhagavad would stand for beauty. So, why not to go for this? Yeah. So, that you be pretty sure that the message has been conveyed properly. Beauty. Okay. So, if you use this word, so obviously your style becomes a bit hard. Suppose, governations means repercussions. Repercussions, I think so many of us know, repercussions means off the effect of something. Repercussions. This word itself is a bit difficult for a layman. Instead of using repercussion, it will say after effects. I think everyone can understand that. Got some idea? There, are you getting? Okay. Perpendicularity. Perpendicular stands for its literal meaning is when the thing is actually hanging like this. It is perpendicular. But in right Scholarly English perpendicularity is used for in the sense that when you you or your character is very you actually sort of you have sort of self-control. Perpendicularity means self-control or aplomb. If you use the word aplomb, so aplomb might be a bit difficult for a layman or even an average person. So avoid this sort of words. In routine writing, obviously in some writing they might be routine words. But as I said that your main target should be to address your audience. If your audience actually finds it difficult, it's no use. So you have to avoid this thing. It means you have to, your style, your writing should not be verbose. 
Are you getting there? Would you remember that? So, got some idea? You have to avoid this thing to an extent. And if you right, use it in somehow, then you have to be very consistent. What's meant by consistency? That it should be thought of explanation, but you have to, there should be sort of balance, parallel structure. Okay. So, the next phase, as you can see over here, is rule of brevity. Rule of brevity means you would have heard the word rule of brevity. B R E V I T Y. Now we are going to discuss this. Have you any one of you has heard this? Perhaps no. But you might have heard the word concise. Conciseness. Right? Conciseness basically means when you say something in the fewest possible words. Saying something in the fewest possible words, but not at the cost of some other thing. Right? So your message should be conveyed, but it should be brief to the point. Okay? So brevity actually is sort of conciseness, but it is in a way a bit formal, more formal, and a step ahead. The rule of brevity says that whatever you should say, that should not just be concise, rather that should be pertinent, relevant to the point. Okay? So brevity means, right, things should be clear, but things should be clear, but try to use, right, fewest possible words. Suppose, to understand this concept, you need to be clear about two, three things. The first is word. The second is phrase. Okay. The third is clause. Right. All of you know what's meant by word. Always words are there. It's very simple. Phrase. Try to understand what's meant by this word phrase. Phrase can be used in different ways. Suppose sometimes you say, whichever way you phrase it, that means whichever way you shape it, whichever you take it, something like that. But phrase in grammar means a group of words that gives incomplete sense. A combination of words that gives a group of words that gives what? That gives incomplete sense. Gives incomplete. Stress is on this. Incomplete. Sense. Okay. Or some I can know. A combination of words that has incomplete in it. That means it's no way a sentence. It's a right group of words, two or more than two words. Suppose an example, if I say in a way. Okay. In the way. On the way. Look up. Take off. Right? So all these are phrases. So technically there is then there are different types of phrases, but that's not our concern at the moment. So these are different phrases. Two C words that they take off to look up in a way, on the way, in the way, whatever. So these are different phrases. Got some idea. And the next thing is clause. Be clear about this thing. I won't delve into it, I won't give right, it's detailed, but just clause is actually an expression. You, just for the sake of understanding, we say a clause is a simple sentence, though there is slight difference, right? But clause means an expression, just for the sake of understanding, an expression, a combination of words that gives complete sense. Okay, how do you take it? A combination of words. A combination of words that gives complete sense. That's all. That gives complete sense. Okay. Stress is on complete. The word complete. Okay. I won't go into its detail that clause has a subject, it has a predicate, technique. So just we are trying to understand this thing. So word, clear, phrase means a group of words with Incomplete sense and clause means a group of words with complete sense. 
got some idea or not. Oh. So, may I rub it up? Rub out or rub down? Rub out. Rub out. Oh. Okay, so the purpose of all this was that the, according to the rule of gravity, this rule says that your expression should be brief. It should be brief, but not at the cost that you make a thing so brief that the whole expression is lost. It should not be the case. The rule of gravity says that instead of instead of using a clause, okay, use a phrase. Okay, instead of using a clause, use a phrase. Okay. Or you can say the word instead of using a phrase, use a verb, if possible, obviously, not at the cost of the whole expression. So this is the theme of it. It means, suppose you write something and you can do with this word. You see that one word is doing the job. No need of write using some phrase. It's okay. If you say, oh, yeah, one word is not enough, but I must use phrase for it. Phrase will do the justice with this expression. But not this clause. It means the first preference is this. Use just one word. Phrase is the next step and clause is the last resort is fine. The theme of all this is, so I don't want to go in detail that clause, this and that, whatever. So just try to understand. Instead of using the whole sentence, use a phrase. Instead of using a phrase, if you can, use a verse. Right? Suppose I say, just, just for the, just one example of these two. I say he was, he was talking, he was talking in a rough manner. Okay. If I say he was talking roughly, he was talking roughly. Clear? In a rough manner is a phrase. Two, three words are there. And roughly is a word. Technically it's an adverb. Whatever it is, leave that. So, it is said that this expression is not incorrect. This expression is not incorrect. He was talking in a rough manner. This is not incorrect. But grammatically, and according to this rule, this expression is correct. This is a subtle difference. If you say he was talking in a rough manner, no harm in that. It's okay. But if you can do with this thing, he was talking roughly. So this, according to the rule of gravity, roughly is better than this. Are you with me? So it means you have to use the fewest possible words. But sometimes people try to stick to this rule of gravity. The very theme of that is lost. That is just nonsense. Okay. So if you really want to write in Google language, so you have to be clear about this. Let's get the next one, rule of proximity. Actually, it's basically a game of words. If you do understand the word, the literal and connotative meaning of that, one can understand things in terms of that. Difficult. Yes, the next is what? Rule of proximity, number three. Rule of proximity, okay. Rule of proximity. Just for further clarification, I'm writing it over here. To understand this rule, first you have to be clear about this word. So what's meant by proximity? Have you heard? Right? The word proximity itself comes in sort of a bossity, right? It's a bit heavy, but this word basically is from proximity. P R O. X, I, M, A, S. Proximal is something that is in your reach, that is near you, right? Something that is close to you or in your reach or in hand in a way. So proximity means nearness. Proximal means near and proximity means nearness when something is right, close to you in a way. So 
So what does this rule say? According to this rule, right? What's the concept? Rule of proximity. In simple words, the rule of nearness. It says that in while most of the exams actually this rule is applied in students, they just actually do sort of guesswork. They are not sure actually what the logic behind that is. And so the rule of proximity says that in any expression, suppose I say Nasir, okay, and his friends, okay, is are coming. Nasir and his friends are coming. So, in this expression, actually, there are two subjects. Nasir is the first subject. This is your first subject. First subject. First subject and uh, his friends. This is your second subject. This is your second subject. Right? I think all of you know this thing that subject is like this. Right? So, this is your first subject and this is your second subject. And soon, sometimes they become a bit confused, right? Okay, whether I should use is or are. Sometimes they guess it should be are. Some say it should be is. It sounds. So, they are not actually clear about the concept. So, according to this rule of proximity, it says that we have to stick to the second subject. Second subject means the subject that is in proximity of this auxiliary verb. The subject that is close to this, all of you know these are called helping verbs, these are MR or something. The subject that is close to this auxiliary verb is called, yes, second subject. So in very simple words, rule of proximity says that whenever you have to, to <laughs> match actually things, Right? So you have to keep in mind the second subject. You so if I so in this case what should be the answer? What is the second subject is his friends, something to it, so obviously we we'll use if I reverse the same, suppose if I say his friends and Nasir. Okay, his friends and Nasir. Okay, so his is causing sort of ambiguity over here, right, grammatically, but just for clarification, for the sake of idea, I'm just giving this example. His friend and Nasir is are coming. Yes, his friends, first subject, over here has become first. Okay. And Nasir is your second subject. So, according to the rule of proximity, even a lay folk can guess that because this is our second subject and according to the rule of proximity, we have to go for the second subject. So, answer should be yes, because it's true, it's singular. Clear? So, rule of proximity sounds a bit difficult, but it is just nothing. Always go for the second subject. Always go for the, so we say, either his friends, right? His friends or he, right? Is are responsible. Either his friends or he is responsible. Okay. So, first subject, second, right? No confusion, right? We have to go for the second subject. Therefore, in simple words, we have to. Right, focus on the second subject. Second is he, he matches with his, so answer is he is responsible. So don't mix things. Clear? I'm pretty sure you would have understood to an extent at least. Okay. May I rub it down if you? Yeah. So the next is, yes, the next rule more. Yes, you can, if you can see. The next rule is the rule of what? Magnilocancy. This word itself is a bit verbose, right? Some students cannot pronounce the very word. But as I've said in the very start, this, this lecture is not for the general public in that sense. It is for those students who 
do a bit in competitive exams or something like that. So, Magni Law Prince, number four. This is Magni Law Prince. Have you, anyone of you, ever heard this thing? Yes? Yes. So, it comes to what? What? The five? So, Magni and Lockins. Yes, split this word two parts. Magni is sort of Magga. Magga means big. Right? Magni means big. And Lokrinsi is sort of right, it's from Lokshin. Lokshin means conversation, conversation, the process of speaking, whatever. Lokrinsi means, right, the way you process of talking to someone, speaking or whatever. So, Magni Lokrinsi means when you talk to someone, when you are speaking, you use what? You use very heavy words, but the question pops up. In the very start I said, when you use heavy words, that rule is called the rule of verbosity. And now I'm saying, when you use heavy words, and this is called negative offense. The difference is, in case of verbosity, you are using very difficult words, heavy words that are not actually in the knowledge of the general public. But negative offense actually does not mean the use of heavy words. It means the use of heavy expressions, heavy language for simple things, right? Words might not be that difficult, but expression is so complicated. Suppose you just need a glass of water. If you say, could you bring me a glass of water? Yeah, bring me a glass of water. Okay, I would you bring. So these are routine expressions. Many law principles means you, right, you very not Heavy word, but expression is heavy. Whatever you say, you are just actually prolonging that for nothing. Suppose you need a glass of water, I just said, so you say this thing like this, something like this. If your forefathers huh? and your fathers. Right? Something like this. Does not mind may I master of courage to collect courage to ask you to bring me in muscle. Look, so it means words are simple. There's no difficulty. What? What the hell? Right? If your parents, if your forefather, then your father, it does not mind me, must have courage to ask you to bring me a glass of water. So sometimes students and other even senior teachers and senior people, they do this sort of thing. Right? This is called fudging, right? You just write use words and just to actually fill up those gaps, okay, so the, the checker may feel that actually you have written a lot, but this is not the case. In writing standard exams or in when, when you are selected for some, this sort of selection for some like key post of 17 grade or whatever, this sort of right expressions, you cannot duck people, you cannot dodge them by this sort of thing. So, this is what was it in Magni Lopensi. What your this is Magni Lopensi. Words are not that difficult, they are routine words, but you see a walk. You could have said this thing in a very simple way. That means you, as I said, you have to avoid this thing, you have to go for this thing, you have to go for this thing. And now Magni Lopensi is something negative. Okay? It is something negative. So you have to shun it, you have to avoid it, you have to avoid it at every cost. And sometimes wittingly, unwittingly, intensely, unwittingly, we do this sort of thing. So you have to try your best to avoid this sort of thing. 
So I think for today it's enough. You might have got some idea. Inshallah, I'll explain the latest remaining rules in the coming lecture very soon, inshallah, if I find time for that. Thank you very much for being so patient and inshallah. I'm positive that you have got butchering about something. If there is still some difficulty, you can ask that in comments. Feel free to ask anything. Right? Thank you very much. Take it. Allah. See you.